In this video, we solve a higher order differential equation. It happens to be a fourth order differential equation. Oops, and I forgot the powers of x. So there should be an x to the fourth there, and an x cubed, an x squared, and an x. There we go. Um, this is a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. Um, and this example was designed to have complex conjugate roots. So provided I did everything correctly, I've set it up right, um, and it has uh, complex conjugate roots. So we've got x to the fourth times the fourth derivative, we've got an x cubed times the third derivative, an x squared times the second derivative, an x to the first times the first derivative, and no x's times, but y to the zero. So this differential equation is a Cauchy-Euler equation. So um, since it's Cauchy-Euler, we let y equal x to the m, where m is some unknown constant. We're going to find out what that constant has to be to make this true, make this function satisfy that equation. So we'll take the first derivative. So you bring the power down, multiply by x to the one less power. Take the second derivative. So you bring the next power down, multiply by x to the one less power, and then you distribute. When you take the third derivative, you're going to do that again. First times first is m cubed. Outer times outer is minus 2m squared. Inner times inner is another minus m squared. So we've got negative 3m squared. And last times last is 2m. And then the fourth derivative. This is just a constant, so you bring it down. And then you multiply by that m minus 3, because you're bringing the power down and multiplying by x to the one less power. So we get that. If we distribute the m through here, we'll get m to the 4 minus 3m cubed plus 2m squared. If we distribute the negative 3 through here, we'll get negative 3m cubed plus 9m squared minus 6m times x to the m minus 4. And we can collect like terms, always a good idea. I've got negative 3m cubed minus 3m cubed is minus 6m cubed. And I've got 2m squared plus 9m squared, that's 11m squared. And then I have just the 1m term, that negative 6m. Okay. So we're assuming this function is a solution to the differential equation. So y and y's derivatives, if we substitute those into the equation, we should get 0 when we're done. So we'll substitute. into the differential equation and simplify. So the equation becomes x to the fourth times this fourth derivative of y with respect to x, which gives us m to the fourth minus 6m cubed plus 11m squared minus 6m times x to the m minus 4. And then we're adding 6x cubed times the third derivative of y, which was m cubed minus 3m squared plus 2m times x to the m minus 3. And then we're adding 15x squared times y double prime. And that y double prime is m squared minus m times x to the m minus 2. And then we'll add 19, or excuse me, 9x times y prime. And y prime was m times x to the m minus 1. And then we're adding 16 times y. And y was x to the m. And if you factor out x to the m, this is what you're left with. 
got x to the fourth times x to the m minus four. When you multiply those guys together, you're gonna to get an x to the m because you add the exponents when you multiply um, power functions together. Add the exponents here. Uh, three plus m minus three is gonna be an x to the m. And we've got this one and this one. If you multiply those together, you get an x to the m. If you multiply these together, you get an x to the m. If you just factor that out, you have an x to the m. So there's an x to the m multiplying each of these guys, and then we've got a polynomial times that. So the polynomial that remains is this, m to the fourth minus 6m cubed plus 11m squared minus 6m. That's from this guy. And then we're adding six times this. That's 6m cubed minus 3m squared. Oops, six times that. It's gonna be minus 18m squared. And then six times this is gonna give me a 12m. And then I'm running out of space, so I'll do this on the next line. So I've done this one. Now I need to do these three terms down here. So now you've got 15m squared minus 15m. And here you've got a 9m and a 16. And when you add all those together, you're supposed to get zero. Now there are some like terms there, so we can keep simplifying. We've got an m to the fourth and see what our m cubed terms are. We've got negative six m cubed and a positive six m cubed, so those reduce. Okay, let's look for m squared terms. I've got 11 m squared minus 18 m squared, so that's negative seven m squared, negative seven m squared plus 15 m squared is gonna give me eight m squared. And then we've got m terms, 6m plus 12m, or negative 6m plus 12m is 6m. So we've got 6m minus uh, 15m is negative 9m, and negative 9m plus 9m is 0m. So the m's all reduce. And then we're left with this 16 right here. And that's set equal to zero. So we substituted into the differential equation and we simplified. And then we ended up right here. And you've got this uh, power function times this equals zero if y equals x to the m is a solution to the differential equation. Now, there are only two ways that this could equal zero, and that's if x equals zero or if this polynomial in m equals zero. But we want x to the m to be a solution for an interval of x values. We don't want x to just have to be zero. So if we're saying that this times this equals zero and we want this to take on other values other than x equals zero, want other x values to be um, in the domain of that solution, then the only way that this times this equals zero, assuming that x equals zero is not the only point that we're interested in, is if this polynomial equals zero. So that's our characteristic equation. We substituted into the differential equation and we simplified. We ended up right here. And then we said that this polynomial must be zero. That's our characteristic equation. Now, this factors because we've got an m to the fourth and an m squared here. We don't have an m term or an m cubed term. So this is actually quadratic in form. So that means it can be factored this way. I need two numbers that add to give me, or multiply to give me 16, that add to eight. Four and four will work. So this is, m plus or m squared plus four quantity squared equals zero. Now there are four roots there, but they're repeated. You've got two roots from here and then they're repeated there because it's squared. Um, so first we would find these roots and then think of them as repeated roots. So the way this happens is if m squared plus four is equal to zero, which means m squared is equal to negative four. And if you take the square root of both sides, 
you get m is equal to plus or minus 2i. So that's m1 and m2. But this is squared, so there are actually four roots here. So m1 and m2 are equal to plus and minus 2i, but so are m sub 3 and m sub 4. So here, if we're comparing this, we're calling this alpha plus or minus uh, beta i, just pattern matching, we see that alpha equals 0 and beta equals 2. So our first two solutions are x to the alpha times cosine of beta times natural log of x. Alpha is 0, so this is x to the 0 times cosine of 2, natural log of x. That's our first solution. And the second solution looks just like it, but instead of a cosine, you get a sine. So we have sine of 2 natural log of x is our second solution. Now those are the first two solutions. If this was just m squared plus 4 equals 0, um, then we would have this, and we would have uh, this would correspond to a second order differential equation, and the general solution would be c1y1 plus c2y2 but it was a fourth order differential equation. We had a complex conjugate pair that was repeated. It was repeated twice, or it appeared, this m squared plus four factor repeated, was appeared twice, excuse me, in that factored form of that polynomial. So we get the first two solutions the way we traditionally would, and then the next two solutions come from taking these guys and multiplying by an extra natural log of x. So we'll take this first one and multiply by nat natural log of x and take the second one and multiply by natural log of x. And those are our four solutions. So the general solution, since it was a fourth order equation is C1Y1 plus C2Y2 plus c sub 3, uh, y sub 3 plus c sub 4, y sub 4. And this will work on um, the interval from 0 to infinity. So we had a characteristic equation. We factored that characteristic equation. Um, we solved for the roots. Since it was a fourth degree polynomial, we found roots m1, m2, m3, and m4. Then we found the corresponding um, linearly independent solutions, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, and y sub 4. And then we stated the general solution on an interval i. Um, so that's how we handle um, repeated complex conjugate pairs.